Hello, this is Carrie from Cookbook Divas, and today I thought it would be fun to look through Beyond the North Wind, Russia in Recipes and Lore. I haven't peeked yet, but I'm suspecting it's more than just a cookbook. I love Russian cooking, and I've taken several classes on it. I love beets. I don't like borscht, though, so I'm really looking forward to checking this out. Take a look through it with me. Okay, Forest, Wolf, Dara Goldstein, Beyond the North Wind. Don't put off till supper what you can eat at lunch, Alexander Pushkin. <laughs> Ten Speed Press. Let's check out the table of contents, shall we? The Flavors of Russia, Introduction Chasing the Past. Chapter 1 is Drinks, Preserves, and Sauces. Chapter 2 is Ferments. Ooh. Chapter three, oh yeah, pies, pancakes, and dumplings. And if you think I'm serving those just for breakfast, you would be completely wrong. Soups, salads and vegetables, grains, fish, meat, and sweets. I'm going to rush through the fish and meat section because I'm vegetarian, but I do want you to know what's in there. A note on ingredients. Most of the ingredients called for in this book are easy to find in grocery or health food stores. Others, like sea buckthorn and caviar, can be ordered online. You can find a list of sources at the back of this book. Uh, she says, otherwise, unless noted, I use unsalted butter, large eggs, diamond kosher salt, and unbleached all-purpose flour throughout the book. When rye flour is specified for baking, I use light rye for a fine texture, though dark rye can be substituted. Now I'm hungry for rye bread. Okay, uh, starting off, picture of, I don't know what, is there an explanation? No! Okay. Snow, chasing the past. Ah, I see some northern lights, etc. etc. Okay. Moving on. History of Russia and the foods they're eating there. Woo! I'm gonna learn a lot from this one. I actually own this cookbook. I bought it. I'm not sure what's going on in this picture because there's no explanation. The poetry of place. Okay, let's get to the recipes. Today's Russian table, the way people are eating now, okay, hopefully not at McDonald's because we have a bad influence in other countries. I wish I knew what these were pictures of. There's no captions. That's very disappointing. Okay, we're finally at the recipes. About how many pages in are we before we finally hit a recipe? Oh, okay, only 30 pages in. Okay, drinks, preserves, and sauces. We're going to make a sea buckthorn tonic. Lingonberry cranberry juice. There's a page called At the Dacha. Infused vodkas, including pepper vodka, cherry vodka, yum. A couple pages about vodka, summer berry compote, hot spiced honey, tea with sea buckthorn and honey, birch flavored salts, Alexander's sweet and sour cucumbers, dandelion blossom syrup, ooh, pear and carrot relish. Sugared red currants, black currant sauce, hot cranberry sauce. So some of this seemed really spring and summery to me, but then hot cranberry sauce and black currant is definitely fall and winter to me. Let's check out how the pictures look. Okay, picture of a tonic. Okay, picture of her house. Not a lot of, okay, that'll explain what's in the photos. Tarragon vodka, birch bud vodka. And a couple pages on vodka. So this is really educational, not just a cookbook. Okay. I'm going to sneak ahead. There's not a lot of pictures of like dandelion blossom syrup, but we know what that looks like. Carrot relish. It's a beautiful cookbook for sure. An abundance of honey. It's a lot more reading than I would have expected, but that's good because if I need to learn the cultural history of Russia, I have extra reading time since we're quarantining and staying at home a lot more. I would like to hop over to the, oh, new section, ferments. This is really intimidating to me. I haven't taken any classes on fermenting. I haven't read any books or cookbooks on it. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's super, super important part of Russian, Ukrainian, Polish cooking, all those Northern European ones. We'll learn to make cultured butter with whitefish roe. I'll have a no thank you helping. Homemade sour cream and cultured butter. Yum. Homemade farmer's cheese. Baked cultured milk, fermented oatmeal, hmm. half sour dill pickles, brined tomatoes, brined apples, kvass, sparkling kvass, beet kvass, 
Raspberry Voss. I hope I, hope I said that right. Okay. I'm going to skip through some of the pictures because we know what pickles look like. Oh, here's a cute kid. Don't know who that is. Okay. Skip, skip, skip. Apples sparkling. Oh, here's a chapter on lavish hospitality. I have heard that actually. Gorgeous, gorgeous photos, but with no captions. Uh, okay. Now we're in probably what's going to be my favorite chapter. Pies, pancakes, and dumplings. Russian hand pies, little fish pies, pickle pies, <laughs> uh, batrushki, puff pies, kulibiak, kulibiak, I don't know what that is, chicken pie, scallion pie, blini, of course, pink blini, farmer's cheese pancakes, oh, I'm so hungry now, pumpkin pancakes, pelmeni or Siberian dumplings, and I actually have a pelmeni making tool like pan that you use to make them, dumplings with mushrooms and buckwheat, yum. Look at this gorgeous picture of hand pies. Does that not make you want to run into the kitchen right now and make them? Oh, love it. Let's see what the pickle pies look like. No picture. Oh, batrushki, something with dough. Sounds good to me. Puff pies. Yep, yep, yep. This is my favorite chapter. Get to the pancakes. Let me see the thing. Okay, blini. Yep, here's your gooseberry apple compote blini. Uh huh. Oh, here's a kid holding a blini in front of their face. Farmer's cheese pancakes. Yes, yes, and more yes, please. Okay, I gotta skip to another chapter because I can't show you the whole book. Soups. Dried mushroom and barley soup. Palmer style or Palmer style fish soup. Savory fish soup. Borscht, of course. Classic cabbage soup. Uh, Rasolnik. Cold vegetable soup. And summer beet soup. Okay, I'll show you a soup and we shall move on so that this cookbook look through doesn't take all day. There's summer beet soup. Beautiful. Whoever did the food styling and photography is awesome. Salads and vegetables, 20 minute pickles, more pickles, yay. Lightly salted chanterelles, marinated mushrooms, beet salad, salted cabbage. Ooh, I don't really care for cabbage, but I, I bet this book could convince me. Peter the Great in the Kitchen, a little history chapter and one on Soviet fare. Salted salmon potato salad, no thank you. Roasted radishes with garlic and caraway. Ooh, I wouldn't have thought to do that. Roasted cabbage with sour cream. Oh, yeah. Cucumbers and sour cream. Vegetarian cabbage rolls. Thank you. Steamed turnips with sunflower oil. Mashed potatoes and parsley root. And potatoes and mushrooms baked in a pot. Ooh. Let me grab a picture for an example. Here's the radishes with garlic and caraway. And veg vegetarian cabbage rolls. That looks really good, especially in autumn. The grains chapter, steamed buckwheat, six ways to serve kasha, foods from the east, buckwheat croutons, sprouted rye porridge, hmm, barley rye cakes, millet porridge with pumpkin, wheat berry porridge. I'm not sure you're going to convince me that any of that sounds good or like it's worth the time to make it, but I could read through the cookbook and be proven wrong. It looks too healthy. Fish, mermance style cod. Herring and mustard dill sauce, shaved salmon, caviar, baked fish cakes, pickled smelts, brine poached turbo or turbot. I don't know how to say that because I don't know anything about fish. And braised cod with horseradish. Okay, of course, fish is an important part of the Russian diet. Meat. Oven braised veal stew with cherries. Braised pork with vas and honey. Braised duck with turnips. A little section on the Russian stove and performing the meal. Beef stew with horseradish, roast lamb with kasha, brine braised giblets, that's almost a tongue twister, venison meatballs with roasted celery root and mushrooms, and beef and aspic. Okay, I'll try to find a picture that won't make me throw up. Yay! There you go. And we're moving on to the last chapter on sweets. Sour cream honey cake, info on the samovar that they used to make tea, info on the charlotte russe. That was the name of my favorite clothing store in the 80s gingerbread, and anyway, a bird cherry cake, grated apple cake, black currant cheesecake, yum, pear charlotte, baked apples with caramel sauce, buckwheat honey ice cream. There's a lot of buckwheat in this book. A gingerbread cookies, gooseberry mousse. I don't know if I can get gooseberries. Rhubarb pudding, black bread pudding with apples, Easter cheesecake, and Easter bread. Okay, let me find the best picture to show you from the chapter. No, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Now oh, that's just pink stuff in a bowl. How about that? Ooh, pretty. 
that is the Easter bread. Love it. Okay, this book is heftier and more reading than I anticipated when I bought it. Uh, I'm definitely going to settle in and read it in front of the fireplace, maybe with a glass of vodka or wine, because I do want to learn about the Russian culture and where all these recipes came from. And I'm probably going to go straight to the hand pies and make those first. Thanks for watching this cookbook look through of Beyond the North Wind. And you can see more cookbook look throughs on the Cookbook Divas channels on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest eventually, and of course YouTube. Thanks for watching.